Hi everyone, Rat Drew here. I had a great time out this morning uh, photographing after the snow. It was about 15 degrees out and six inches of snow and I went to one of my favorite parks here in uh, in Indiana, uh, Fort Ben Harrison Park and went down along the um, Fall Creek River here and I made this photograph and I wanted to share with you some of what I did um, to get the image as clean as it is um, without noise and and sharp. Um, so first off, I just want to say I am using the 12 Pro Max with the silicone case, the Apple silicone case, and the um, 52 millimeter, 720 nanometer infrared filter from Spencer's. And the reason I, I used the 12 Pro Max today, uh, as you know, we've been having issues with trying to do um, infrared with the native camera on the 13 Pro. Um, and so I used the 12 Pro Max today because I can use the native camera and handhold. I'm getting great images with the um, 13 Pro Max as long as I use Lightroom, Camera Plus 2, or even Halide. But for those three uh, cameras, uh, it requires a tripod. So I, today it was 14 degrees, so I didn't feel like messing with the tripod. So here's, here's the image. I want to show you... Um, uh, what I ended up doing. So I'm going to scroll over here. Here's the image right out of the camera. Uh, and again, this was the uh, the native camera. I um, I think this was the 1X or the 26 millimeter lens. And I have my, my infrared filter uh, kind of stuck on my case, uh, the way it works with that uh, silicone case. Um, it, it ended up being about a one second long uh, night mode photograph. So it's it's getting its settings automatically and then it's shooting for a second and then using computational photography it does whatever magic it does behind the scenes with that image. So this is what it looks like. So what I wanted to do um, I've been taking things into Lightroom more and more especially now that we have Lightroom's tool uh, the um, uh, masking tool has been updated and it's just amazing. So um, here's the way I do this. So I'm in the camera roll right here. You can see it tells me it's a raw file and so on. And I'm just going to go down to the share icon in the bottom and tap on that. And if I scroll over here, there I can just open Lightroom from here. So I'm going to tap on that and it tells me um, I can either uh, t t say got it and it will wait until I launch Lightroom to uh, upload this image. Or I can say, nah, I want to do it right now. So I'm going to tap launch Lightroom right now. So it's taking us in here and there's our image. Actually, I need to go in here and undo all of this stuff because I had actually processed it before. So that's how I got the image into um, the library uh, and, and visible in the camera roll. So there it is, February 4, uh, this morning at 10, 10 to 57 is when I put it in there. So I'll tap on that. Here is our image, and here's the process that I've been using um, to get these images sharp and clean and, and relatively noise-free um, just with the phone. So the first thing I'm going to do here is go to my color, and I'm going to drop all of my values down to zero. And there we have that. Next, I'm going to go to effects. And I'm going to bring my texture up to about 30. I find if I go any further than that, it starts to get a little edgy and I don't, I don't like it. Clarity, I'm going to take up to maybe 17 or so. I keep it under 20 most times. Again, depends on the image, but um, you can zoom in and see what's happening. I don't use dehaze or vignette at this point. I'm going to go next to details and I'm going to bring my sharpening up almost all the way up. And then my radius also almost 200 percent. I'm going to drop details down to zero and then I'm going to take the masking and slide up and I want to show you something that I just learned with the masking. Um, when you're doing this on your phone you kind of have to be I don't know very coordinated but what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide the slider back and forth below and I'm going to depress the image and look when I do that it's showing me the areas that are going to be masked or not so if I go way this way you can see I want to get my blacks. I want this image to look really black. Um, and that's why I go almost to 100% right there. So there's our image now. Um, and, you know, if we go back, there's where, we, there's where we started and there's where we are now. So the next thing I'm going to do is go to my optics. 
And uh, this is something I've just gotten in the habit of doing. Um, I'll tap the uh, remove chromatic aberration, which I really don't see anything here with that. But then watch the, sh watch the image shift when I tap enable lens correction. So there we go. You see that little, it just did a little pop in the center. Um, so it's just correcting some of that distortion. So once I get all of that, the next thing I'm going to do is go to light. And you notice I have the histogram on up there. I can tap to turn it off, tap again to see the metadata, tap again to turn it on. Now, if you're not seeing that, go up to the little um, three dots up there, the little ellipsis in the right-hand corner, and tap on that. Come on. There we go. And down here, you want to choose View Options and make sure you have uh, Show Info Overlays turned on. And as long as you do, then you can use two fingers, tap, goes away, tap, you get your metadata, tap, you get your, your uh, histogram. So I want to use the histogram for this, and I'm going to scroll down to my whites and blacks. And my blacks are already over close to the, the left side there. So if I go a little further, I might just bring them just where they start to clip. Then I'm going to take the whites, and I'm going to bring those up also. <clears throat> just until they start to clip. So my whole goal here is to try and prevent blowing out these white areas. And so areas that are in jeopardy of that are here on this tree and this in this foreground. And the foreground here looks pretty good. The tree, however, may not quite be uh, what I want, but we may fix some of that with masking. Now I'm going to come up and play with my shadows. So I'm going to, if I drop my shadows down, I can deepen them, but I don't want to lose detail in the river over here. So I might bring those back up a little bit. I'm not seeing a lot of darkening in the shadows over here of these trees. Um, if I go back up, I can lift the shadows in this area over here. So the next thing I'll do is go to my highlights. And again, if I bring them up too much, I'm blowing out those areas in the foreground in that tree. But if I drop them down just a little bit, I can avoid having you know blowing out those areas um, of snow and then maybe just a tiny bit of contrast but you got to be careful with that because then you'll you'll brighten your brights and darken your blacks and you'll you'll be back to where you have to go and and um, accommodate those you know work those bright areas there and eliminate them so um, do something like something like that um, but that's that's it on the um, on light. So now here's where it gets interesting. I'm going to go all the way over here to the masking button. It's the one on the, all the way on the left. And if you haven't used this lately, they they updated it in October and basically overhauled it. It's really quite incredible. So what I'm going to do here first, let's tap on um, let's tap on the plus, and I'm going to go up and say select the sky, and let's just see how it does. Okay, so it did a pretty nice job of selecting the sky. So what I like to have, that was a, that's a blue sky over some white clouds. And what I want to do is go to my uh, exposure values here, and I want to um, darken that exposure, and it lets me darken that sky without darkening anything else in the, uh, darkening anything else in the image. Um, I could play with some of these other things here, but I don't really see the need to maybe just a little bit of brightness to lift the clouds, the light clouds a little bit. Um, but that's looking pretty good. Um, and it, But I just think that's really cool the way it will select that, um, that sky. The other thing we could do here, let me back out of that. I'm going to discard that particular um, adjustment. The other adjustment that we have here, if I go back to masking, tap on the plus sign, I can select a linear gradient right here. When I do, you don't really see anything <clears throat> until you take your finger. And I'm just going to grab and drag down and try and keep it level. It's a little challenging. And I'm just going to bring that down like that. And now, well, come on. There we go. Now I'm going to go to light. And this time, I'm going to drop the exposure down. And look, I'm just darkening it in the top part of the, of the scene. Um, and I'll go ahead and check OK on that. And now there's, there is our image. There's where we started, and there's where we are now. And if you, if you zoom in on this, I mean, it's, it's sharp, 
and it's um, got nice values in terms of the brightness of it, of the white areas and the darkness of the black areas. We don't have anything blown out. The contrast is really good um, and it's relatively clean. And this is all on the iPhone. If I wanted this to be even, even cleaner in terms of noise, I will take it to the desktop and run it through Denoise AI. Uh, but for today, I did. I worked this up when I was out in the car earlier this morning, right after I took the shot. I got back in the car to warm up. I, it was, as I said, 15 degrees out there. Um, and so, you know, I was able to do all of this on the phone with Lightroom. Um, and uh, I, I just think it's amazing that we can do this. So now I'm all done with these edits. I'm going to go up and tap the share icon up here. And down here, I'm going to go to uh, export the camera roll. Uh, if you haven't done this yet, before you tap export the camera roll, tap on the little uh, sliders on the right there. And you want to go up and make sure that you have uh, the output that you want. I'm choosing a JPEG output. I don't see the point in saving it as a DNG anymore because we've already got the goodness out of that raw file. Um, and I either save as a JPEG or a TIFF. And then I want to make sure that I have at the largest dimensions uh, available that I'm saving in the largest dimensions. And then also, I want to make sure I have 100% selected on my image quality. When you change those things, make sure you hit the check mark up here at the top and not the X. If you hit the X, it won't save any of your changes. I learned that the hard way. So there we go. Now I'm ready to save this to my camera roll. I'm going to tap on export to camera roll. And voila. And let's go out and take a look at it in the camera roll and there's our image i mean for for doing this on the phone i'm totally blown away i'm really amazed um, by how how good this is so before i go i just want to remind you that uh, there is a webinar out there on um, on creating uh, infrared with your iphone uh, did it last august many of you have already taken it i know uh, but i know many of you haven't seen it yet and uh, it's it's just a uh, it's a great way to learn how to do this, how to do it using different camera apps uh, and methods that will work on earlier phones, um, and uh, as well as the 12 Pro Max, um, and then also we're we're having issues with the 13 Pro and its ability to let us shoot with the native camera. But the techniques that I cover in the video on shooting with uh, Lightroom and also with Camera Plus 2 allow us to get really good images with the 13 Pro Max. So uh, if you haven't taken a look at that, um, just wanted to remind you that it's out there. I'll include a link here uh, with this post. Really appreciated seeing all the work that people are doing on, the, uh, on our infrared site. And there's some really creative stuff going on. And hopefully this will just... Uh, you know, add to uh, all the goodness we're seeing. So thanks a lot. Um, thanks for watching. And um, until next time, keep on creating.